Splatoon 2, Nintendo Switch. Game rated everyone 10 and up. Splatoon 2 is a f***ing stupid game. Video Game Donkey, a YouTuber who does a lot of game reviews, is one of my favorite creators, uploaded a Splatoon 2 review just a few days after the game came out, and it's been pretty divisive throughout the community. So I wanted to do a little retrospective and give my honest thoughts on what he said about the game. So we're just gonna get right into it. It's a sequel in the way that Madden 2017 is a sequel. It's a shooting game with bad aiming. I don't know how much harder I can come down on a game than that. Okay, let's talk about bad aiming. So I think he's using sticks in this clip, but I think he'll mention the motion later. At least I'm assuming he must mention the motion at some point. If you don't know, Splatoon does not have any form of aim assist. Splatoon 1 or 2, they both have this. I assume Splatoon 3 will be similar. If you're used to stick controls and you switch to Splatoon, they will inherently feel worse because there's just no form of aim assist on the console. I'm not necessarily opposed to sticks having a little bit of aim assist because, I, like, you can definitely do well with sticks, but motion is just so superiorly better. Like, at a pro level, there's been, like, one good sticks player in the Western scene in, like, the past five years. So I don't necessarily mind a bit of aim assist on sticks to make them feel better, as long as it's not too extreme. And yet I keep playing. Why am I playing this? Whether or not we all ask ourselves that question. I use the dumb motion controls your aiming reticle is never quite where you want it to be i feel like yeah so he doesn't like the motion controls which is fair i mean obviously i think a lot of people in the community are going to come down on it is like dude the motion controls are just good and i mean yeah they are good they are better but not everyone's going to like motion controls and i do think it's more reasonable that if you don't use motion you should have a better alternative than no aim assist sticks like the genesis of this game was just the developers sitting there playing it and going, damn, I can't even aim at other people. All I can do is hit the map. And then they looked at each other and went, oh, that's it. Just shoot the map the entire game. Like Off topic question. How did the topic of shooting the map come into play? Like genuine question. The game solves this issue by saying, hey, you don't really got to shoot a guy to kill him. You just got to shoot towards him. Congratulations, Sonic Team. Not every multi- Honestly, I kind of like that Turf War has that. I think shooting games could be hard to get into sometimes, and having it so you don't have to necessarily shoot other people right away is great. I mean, my opinion on Turf War as a whole is that it's a great beginner mode and not a great competitive mode, but I guess that's more of an in-depth topic for another time. Player shooter has to be super hardcore to be interesting, okay? But I wish more people understood that. Fun to Counter-Strike, uh, Splatoon is just dumb. If Splatoon is very dumb. Even if Splatoon were a 10 out of 10 game, there is no way it is not rated as dumb. Like, you just can't take that out. I feel like an asshole playing this. The bulk of the community is probably like seven years old, and I'm just sitting here- Whenever I play Turf War, I feel like this too. <laughs> in the center of the earth. Most of these matches, I just sit in their spawn and kill them before they can even play the game. Yeah, there's Turf oh, matchmaking really for you. Doing two. Oh no, I remember this. Is oh boy. Plan for launch. The assault rifle I'm is so glad good. Splatoon 3 did not have that problem because like geez I know it's a minor one but god damn that was a terrible announcement assault rifle is the good weapon the assault rifle is the good weapon and he has zap and yeah uh so I mean obviously this was never intended but yeah and zap is the best overall weapon in Splatoon 2's history in terms of weapon that's been good the longest it was solid at the start of the game it got buffed it fell off a tiny bit and then it got buffed again it's like the staple support so, yeah, he was right. Even as last ditch effort to really read a year into the future. Uh, if you like to lose, I recommend the sniper rifle. Charger hater is based. Like to walk around Sorry. The map and not even play the game, remember to use the paint roller. Uh, uh, the bow is just going to be a more fun charger, even if it's worse. Just got to say it. But watch out for people with real weapons. But All right. We got the paint roller isn't really that good comment, which is, again, don't know if it's intended to be taken as serious or not, but it's true. I hate to say it. Uh, rollers are not better than shooters. They never have been. How do I destroy a man's will to exist? Simple. You just kill him with the paint the bucket. Of dumb, dumb. <laughs> this thing is a piece oh, of shit. If you die to the paint bucket, you need to permanently part ways with your self-esteem. Bucket is a piece of shit. <laughs> that goddamn weapon. You suck. However, dead B with the lead, 39-57. However, no penalty for Dynamo. However, they have a stiff. I gotta watch this However, match back sometime. It's so four old. Seconds left that penalty. Like, However, of the Dynamo game. Keeping that Still more balanced than it was on launch. Great defense by dead B. Splatoon's I guess they do say however really long. is the highlight here. Instead of playing as a army man with a M16, you're this genetic abomination who covers the walls with glossy squid ink. You inhabit this f***ing bizarre octopus world where pop stars make routine announcements about which maps are in rotation 
Yeah, I think the aesthetic is arguably the best part of Splatoon in terms of, like, an objective standpoint. It's cool. Like, I know a lot of people say it's childish. I, I don't care. Like, it just looks really nice compared to a lot of other shooters, and I think that definitely deserves a plus. Look at the black one. Look at her fake smile. Something is wrong here. Octo expansion. Something is very, very wrong. Something was wrong. It's definitely <laughs> unique, even if it's barely thought out. There's Ooh. still no voice chat. The no voice chat and barely thought out. So I'm guessing we'll get a bunch of critiques here. I want to take one by one. Uh, voice chat's probably a big one that a lot of people have. I will personally reside in the opinion that I don't really like voice chat. My experience in Overwatch VC is pretty garbage. And I find in most shooters, it's kind of garbage. I do think that it's not a terrible thing, of course. And if they want to put it in, I won't be opposed. But I'm not someone who always feels that voice chat is needed. I do think at the very least we need better communication options. The this way booyah in the bottom left corner is just ridiculous. So yeah, I think if anything, better communication is a must, even if I don't agree that it needs to be voice. The weapons are hopelessly unbalanced. You yeah, the start of Splatoon 2 was horrible balance. Now, yes, the start of Splatoon 1 was also terrible balance, but that was the first game. <laughs> that was right on launch. And, and Splatoon 1 never got super well balanced, but it got better. And then Splatoon 2 came out and it had worse balance than endgame Splatoon 1. Worse balance than the game with invincibilities and quick respawn <laughs> that activates every time you die. Like, I firmly believe the game had not been play tested. The starting meta was literally three of a single weapon. Two specials were entirely broken. The sub weapons were even more unbalanced than they are today. Like, it's ridiculously bad. Yeah, I think it's a huge critique. You can no longer see the minimap in real time, like on the Wii U. Oh, the minimap. Okay, so this is going to be another divisive one because I think the majority of people in the Splatoon community disagree with me on this, but I actually highly prefer being able to put up the map on the actual screen as opposed to looking at the gamepad because to me, I would rather be able to look in the same spot and then open the map and close it and just check one area rather than move my face down to see the gamepad. But like, I guess if you hold the gamepad like this to where it's next to your TV, which is something, again, much more possible with stick controls, then yeah, I could understand like this is better, obviously, because you can see both at the same time. But I think as a whole, the minimap system is fine and not really something I'd see as a critique. Also, what is that icon on the top left on the gamepad? I don't remember that in Splatoon 1. I played that game a lot recently. I wonder what that was supposed to be. The spawn thing pretty much exclusively functions as a suicide button. Ooh, super jumping. Okay, I think for most points, I can see where he's coming from. The super jump is the one thing here so far that I'm going to heavily disagree on because I think it's just a bad jump. I think super jumping would be incredibly broken if it was safe. Now, an argument can be made to make it safer, something like what stealth jump does as an ability, but it would have to be way weaker if it was a default thing. But as a whole, I honestly don't think this is super flawed, and if super jumping was really protected and safe, then it would just break the game because it would make respawns way too fast. It being more situational, I think, is important. But I still think there are ways to improve it. It's just more, I don't consider it a major problem with the game. Almost none of the interesting mechanics from the single player mode are utilized in the multiplayer. Yeah, and this was an even bigger problem in Splatoon 1 because Splatoon 2 at least had uh, sponges and rails, which were not in Splatoon 1 outside of the single player. And yeah, there were so many cool things introduced in Splatoon 2. He showed off the ride rails and the dash pads, which are awesome. And yeah, they're just not in multiplayer. Now, yes, I'm aware of Splatfest stages being a thing. Obviously, that's a bit after this review came out, and those do include the single player elements, and you can access them in PBs now. I still don't think that that's enough. I think that's good for some of the single player aspects that just don't fit well in multiplayer levels, like the flutters. But again, stuff like the ride rails and dash pads really should have been in the multiplayer, like the base maps, and it really would have enhanced it. So I think that's a big point and something not a lot of people talk about. Anytime I see someone new playing the single player, they often ask if these are in multiplayer and it's a shame to tell them now is it good not really uh is it fun kind of is it good i love splatoon i think splatoon 2 at launch was still a blast to me as a fan of the game can i say splatoon 2's launch was objectively good uh no i can't say it's good honestly like i love being able to play the game experimenting with the new stuff but i think so many things just weren't well thought out. There wasn't enough content on launch, which is something I'm surprised he didn't bring up. There's like so many weapons in the first game that weren't even available until a few months after release. Yeah, I mean, Splatoon 2, I think is a good game now, but I think it took a year or so to actually get there once we got better balancing, we got Octo Expansion, a bunch of weapons, all that kind of stuff I think made it a lot better. Even if this game is a cheesy ass piece of garbage, there's still something about Splat and Paint that is intensely captivating. But hey, there, yeah, I mean, 
I don't know how to describe it, but it's kind of true, and I think most Splatoon fans will relate to that statement. You guys think about Splatoon too. Splatoon is cool. What is it, a little Pokemon? This game stinks. The Meavers slash Plaza Post have to be in every future game. Neck 2 is coming up. My wife left me. God. This is such a good feature. Neck 2, baby! Oh! Was there a ton of knack? I honestly don't remember there being a lot of knack. It's probably just my memory, but I don't remember seeing a lot of knack 2. I'm probably just forgetting, though, because there's no way knack 2 was not a global sensation. Sorry, Reggie, the people have spoken. While you were sitting there eating ice cream, making Splatoon 2, Mark Sony was over here making history. Meanwhile, you're, you're over there, you're not even holding the right system, Reggie. Come on, get your together, man. Splatoon 1 lobby music. It's so good. So there's definitely some parts of this community that absolutely hate this review, and I can totally see why for some of the points. Like, I think the aiming one is something you have to think about a real bit to really understand where he's coming from if you're, like, a hardcore player. But I honestly think this is a rather accurate review. It's definitely harsh, but I would rather reviews be harsh even if it's on, like, my favorite game rather than just sugarcoating. And there's even more issues that I have with the game, like the launch content I mentioned earlier and the special design that I find to be problems that weren't brought up here, which is completely valid. So I think there's a lot more to critique than even he did in this video. And yeah, it's hard to say how much of this review is meant to be taken super seriously, but I know a lot of people take it on face value. And what I'm trying to say is even if you take all of his points at some form of face value, I think almost all of them make some deal of sense. And even the ones that don't have some form of basis to them which is pretty good. And honestly, I think the number one lesson to take away from this is, yes, the launch of Splatoon 3 is very important to be like well-balanced and have enough content and to do enough things well, because Splatoon 2 became a very good game from DLC and from a lot of time being added to the game, but a lot of people are only going to try it when it comes out or are going to have their impressions from it. And I don't think just because after DLC and stuff it's good justifies this game is bad on launch or mediocre or lacking content or whatever. I'm really glad we got the confirmation of all main weapons returning when the game drops already. That's awesome. There's definitely more we need to see, but Splatoon 3 cannot have a launch like Splatoon 2 because yeah, these complaints, most of them are pretty valid and I don't think Splatoon 3 will get away with having a launch as bad as Splatoon 2. So yeah, that's my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you didn't, it's because you're nitpicking and bias. I win. Bye-bye.